Welcome to Mac Connections, the podcast. Keeping connected and looking after yourselves is so important during these changing times. We trust the following conversation will provide some helpful guidance. We want to be able to provide all the support we can. Our patron, St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop, wrote in 1875, May God bless and keep you and give you courage. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast is recorded. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to the Aboriginal elders emerging. Episode 24, Transition into Year 7. Here is your host, Director of Wellbeing, Mr. Andrew Exton. Welcome to the Mac Connections podcast. Over the next year or so, we plan to do a number of podcasts for our Year 7, Year 8 and Year 9 parents and students, exploring some of the topics that are relevant to them. We're going to have Jo Parker with us from HeartSparks. Jo is a life coach. She's worked at McKillop around wellbeing programs and has got a broad range of expertise in terms of working with young people of all ages around some of the topics that we're going to discuss today. Today's podcast is going to be about transition and specifically looking at the transition for our year six students moving into year seven in 2021. We know that by the time parents have listened to this podcast, their children have experienced their first day of MacKillop in terms of an orientation day that will take place on Thursday of the coming week. We hope that day was a really positive one for your sons and daughters and has only put in place their enthusiasm for coming to MacKillop full time next year. But what we thought we'd do is give some parents or give parents some advice about possible ways to support that transition at the start of 2021. Joe, thank you so much for coming on board. I'm going to start our little discussion by reading a short paragraph from the book Starting Secondary School by Michael Carr Gregg and Sharon Witt, which I think really encompasses or everything about transition. The experience of secondary school is different for everyone. Your son and daughter is made up of 23 chromosomes from you and 23 from the person that you made them with. Throw in the genetic role of the dice, the environment and upbringing, and get a personality disposition and a temperament that is unique to your year seven student that is not a carbon copy of yours. As a result of this magical mix from some very few, the transition to secondary school will be a breeze. We know that it can be quite a bit not like that for some students. But we do know successful students have the following characteristics. Impressive social skills, easy temperament, at least average intelligence, attachment to family, independence and good problem solving. But for most teens, the transition takes adjustment. As they move into year seven, your child will have a lot to handle in a short space of time. Is it fun? Not all the time. Can it be fulfilling? Absolutely. The great news is that surviving and thriving in secondary school years is possible. Parents need to remember the golden rule in psychology. If you cannot change something, you can always change the way you think about it. So with that, Joe, I'm wondering for parents, how important is the mindset of being positive and almost thinking that year seven is a fresh start to support their sons and daughters in the transition to year seven next year? This is a great question to open the conversation up and thank you for having me, Andrew. I think that when it comes to being positive, it's deeply important because it gives young people that sense of curiosity and opportunity and hope for good things coming their way. And the way that I liken positive thinking is like as adults, when we're thinking about buying a car, we might have never seen a Mazda 3 out in the community before, but guaranteed the second that we decide that that's a car we're interested in purchasing, we'll step out and start seeing them pop up everywhere. Likewise, with young people, if we're speaking and offering them opportunities to see something positively or in a helpful way, they're going to be more likely to be paying attention, not just to what we say, but stepping out into the world looking for positive things. What I do need to mention here around this though, is that there's a difference sometimes between positive thinking and helpful thinking. 
And when we care about young people, particularly as parents or guardians, we can be really quick to see those young people experiencing what we deem to be negative emotions or challenging emotions and want to quickly fix the issue or jump in and help them through what's a difficult emotion. And when it comes to times of change and transition, what's most helpful for a young person's development is for them to be free to feel the full spectrum of everything that's going on for them. Sometimes positive, exciting emotions, which we can really support and harness, but in times when a young person is just feeling a little bit scared or concerned about what might happen, it's helpful for us actually just to give them a minute to feel that way and hold space and have conversations about that too, before then we come in and try to support them to think positively about the time ahead. Because if they're not given an opportunity to process how they're feeling, even if we think it's negative, it's then just going to fester inside of them and continue to circle around. So Joe, this coming Thursday, we'll have close to 300 Year 7 students come to MacKillop for their orientation day. And that orientation day is just that. It's it's about becoming a little bit more familiar with your surroundings, who your homeroom teacher will be, and a little bit of an insight into terms of the routine. How important is it to debrief after that event in terms of the experiences? Because as much as we might hope that every student is going to walk away from that orientation period absolutely euphoric and looking so mm -hmm. much to, go, to coming to MacKillop, we are going to have some young people that are a tad overawed or a tad disappointed maybe with the classes they're in and the people they're with. How do you debrief that initially to make sure that those maybe negatives that might come out of the experience don't fester over a longer period of time? As adults, we tend to process a lot internally, whereas for young people, they process so much information by being able to speak about it out loud. And so debriefing days like orientation day or even just the first few days of school in particular going into next year is crucial to students being able to feel supported and feel like they've moved through their experiences before jumping into a new day. Something that's really helpful in this with young people is to have some key questions up your sleeve that you can ask your child or their friends when they come home after an orientation or school day so that you can get the conversation started without having to think on the fly all the time. Key questions that can be great are simply, how was your day today? An obvious one. Uh, what did you learn today? What was exciting about today? What was challenging about today? And were there any new opportunities you saw? And so again, holding space for however it is that they might be feeling, but also feeling like you're getting some consistency and routine in the kinds of conversations that you're having, regardless of how much or how open the young person in your household might be to talking about it when the questions are asked. We all know young people that will hear a question and just go, oh, it was all right, or good, or I don't know, and leave it at that. But don't be disheartened by that if that's your, your child's experience, because by asking the questions, even if they don't talk about much, you're still giving them an opportunity to speak, which is an invitation every single time. So obviously, young people this year have experienced a whole lot more transition in and out of remote learning back to physical learning. So they've experienced the emotions that surround transition. And I think there's probably a fair, fair bit to be said for allowing them the space over, a whole, over the holiday period to just breathe a little bit without yeah. focusing on what the next thing is. But bearing in mind it is six weeks and we know how quickly Christmas comes and then we get to January, they're going to know their individual child. But I'm wondering, how do you, how do you, and when do you start that conversation with, the ch with your child again about the logistics, the emotions and everything that comes with the start of secondary school, which will come around really quickly? Absolutely. It's great to start even just having small conversations early so that there is a longer time for young people to process. And the good news for a lot of year sixes coming into year seven in 2021 is that their resilience is already going to be so much higher because of the experiences that they've had through 2020. A great place to start conversation about this is just to ask 
what do you think you might need to feel really good and prepared going into next year and give that young person an opportunity to use their voice and call out anything that they already know is going to be important. But when it comes to preparing for next year, it doesn't have to be all about emotion and processing emotion because the easiest way to move through any transition is by looking at the things that are unknown and trying to create a little bit more known information or certainty around it. So doing things like practicing your supporting your son, daughter or child to get up early in the morning, the usual time that they'll need to get up to be able to make it to school. Practicing the route to school, the drive, the walk, the bike ride, whatever it might be, to make sure that they know exactly how they're going to arrive at school and where they're going to be able to meet parents to come back home, which is something that Orientation Day, I know, will support them with. Starting to make sure that things like uniforms and book lists and other equipment that they might need is already in place. Supporting them to know where their lunchbox is going to be for them every day if food's available to them at home. And again, knowing how they can get in touch with you as their caregiver, guardian or parent throughout the day should an emergency arise. All of those things, while they seem like such tiny bits of information, if they're set up in advance, they add a little bit more certainty for the young person, which again gives just more comfort overall. Jo, it also seems to me that parents have got a bit of a tightrope to walk here in terms of their communication with the school. It seems to me that while, while students or young people are in primary school, they're happy for their parents to be actively involved and <laughs> happy to participate. But all of a sudden, when they get to secondary school, you see it when the students will arrive on Thursday or on their first day. Some parents want to come in and walk with their kids. Some kids are pushing them away, saying, no, I'm okay. For parents who, who want to navigate this, how important is communication with the school, communication with the homeroom teacher, interacting with the school around the processes, the structure, and just providing information and support. And how do parents navigate that sense of wanting to allow their children to have independence and start you know, being a big kid, so to speak, but also wanting to make sure that they're connected with the people within school that they're going to be working with for that next 12 month period? Mm, this is such a great question and it's a tightrope for sure. All parents do the best that they can and guaranteed we're all going to get it wrong in the, in the eyes of our kids sometimes. And so just starting to have conversations is the best possible thing. When it comes to the school, they are lifelines for parents and caregivers. And so if ever you're wanting to know something or you have a question and you're not sure whether or not it's appropriate to ask the school about it, the best thing to do is just to reach out and have the conversation. It can be hard to know where that line starts, but the same way as your child or the young person living with you is building a relationship with the school. You are too, as parents and guardians. And so please don't hold back in that communication because the school is also there. And I know, I know MacKillop is, to support parents to access information that's relevant in a way that they want to receive it as well. Reaching out to year level coordinators, homeroom teachers, getting to know who they are so you feel comfortable to have conversations with them when you need. And again, if ever there's information that you want that you feel like isn't readily available through your child, I know that the staff at MacKillop are going to be really supporting in letting you know whether it's something that they think you need to know or not and ensuring that you get access to that information however you can. Having said that though, there's also that balance in the relationship between communication and trust. And so as a parent, as much as our child is feeling really unknown about a transition into school, we can feel quite unknown as well and feel that uncertainty for ourselves. And so in much the same way as we're encouraging the young people in our communities to be really brave and courageous and be a little bit vulnerable in not having all of the information all of the time, it's also an invitation for parents and guardians to have faith and trust in the school that they've chosen as well and know that the school is going to be showing up however they can to support young people through the transition too. And Joe, strategies for parents not for, for for them to make sure that they're not passing their anxiety on to their children. Because I think having been through this myself four times, it's, mm. it's never easier the next time or the next time or the next time. It's exactly the same. 
but that balance between the hope and the and the wish that you have for them to have such a positive start but your anxiety around it being different how do we make sure that we're not almost by osmosis making our mm. sons and daughters anxious or worried just because we are Mm. There are three really great strategies that I'd recommend for all parents and guardians around this. The first one is to find other parents and guardians to connect with. And if you can buddy up with another parent or get to know other parents in the school community so that you can share your experiences and also have a place to have how you're feeling mirrored back to you. It can sometimes feel, I know, for parents, like you're the only ones experiencing the anxiety that you have, but guaranteed the parent standing next to you on orientation day or any other is going to be feeling exactly the same way as you are. So being really vulnerable in trying to use your voice and open up conversations with other parents so that you can support each other through the transition, making sure you're talking about it is number one. Number two is a bit of a mindset hack and I'd encourage everyone to make a list of all of the things that you're worried about. Just list them all out on paper or in your phone or on the computer and then go through looking at each thing independently on that list and decide, is this something that I can control completely, that I can influence in some way or that is just something I'm worried about that I have no say over whatsoever. Because we can waste a lot of energy and emotion getting worried about the things that we can't control. But if we're able to focus in on the things on that list that you have control over or that you can influence, we can then start to direct our attention to those places and start to feel like what we're doing and how we're showing up is more purposeful. So recognizing sometimes that there are things we just need to try and support ourselves to let go of. And then also finally, making sure that before you go into conversations with the young person in your household about how their day was or what happened at school, that you know within yourself what the purpose of that conversation is. Is it a conversation that's there to support the young person or is it a conversation that's there to make you feel better? <laughs> and if it's about making you feel better, just making sure that you have a lot of other self-care strategies around you as well so that if your son or daughter decides not to have a conversation with you or isn't as forthcoming with how their day is, is what you'd like for them to be, that's not the make or break about whether you get to feel okay as well. It's new for everyone and it's going to take some time and that's okay. Well, Joe, thank you so much for your insight. And we hope that this has helped um, our incoming Year 7 parents. In fact, whether you're doing it for the first time or the fourth time, it's, it's still really relevant information. So we do thank you very much. This will be the first of a number of podcasts that we hope to do throughout 2021 for all our parents and our students from Year 7 through to Year 9 at MacKillop. We really hope that if there's any topics that you would like us to cover, that you'd get in touch with myself, Andrew Exton at McKillop, and Joe and I will make every effort to cover some of those topics because we'd like the information that we're providing you in this format to be helpful, to be user-friendly, and also to be action-based in terms of giving you strategies around how you can navigate being a parent as your son or daughter navigates themselves, obviously, through the early years of school into the senior secondary school and then beyond. Joe, thanks very much for coming on board and we're really looking forward to doing these for our parents. We've done them throughout the um, remote learning period with uh, good feedback and we'd like to hope that this is just another way of giving our parents and students indeed information that supports them on their journey through MacKillop College. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me and thinking of everyone through the transition ahead. That brings us to the end of this episode. If you do have any questions, queries or concerns, please get in contact with a member of the wellbeing team at McKillop College. Be kind and look after yourself.